And welcome back to another video in our second unit on EDA. In the previous video, we talked about exploring the taxis data set and getting an idea for what it looked like. Here I have the column pickup borough stored in the variable SER for series. But the motivation for this video is going to be how could we get the pickup borough column using lock or I lock, so kind of using these pandas indexing methods. Um, the point of this video is really just to practice with lock and I lock. So by far the easiest way to get this column is by calling it like this, so using square brackets and then passing the name of the column. Um, so the point of this video is really just to practice, show you a couple different indexing things, um, and yeah, so let's get started. So let's try with lock first. So remember the difference between lock and I lock. Lock is label based i lock is integer based, so i for integer. So first thing we might try is we might want to do something like df.lock and then just pass the column name. So I could say df.lock pickup row. But the issue with this is pandas is looking for a row called pickup row, um, and there's no row that's called that, right? It's just a column name. Um, so the way we need to specify it with lock is we need to say take all of the rows, comma, pickup row column. So we'd say df.lock, and again, the way we say take all of the rows is with the colon, and then now we can say pickup row. And we can see here, we get the same thing as above. So that's looking good so far. Again, lock, if I pass it with only pickup row, it's looking for a row with this name, versus I need to say take all of the rows, comma, which column. So that's how we could do it using lock. If we want to do it using iLock, we need to get the integer position of this column pickup row. So there's kind of more elegant ways of doing this, but all I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to say df.columns. So this is going to return column names, and I'm just going to count starting at zero to see where uh, pickup row falls. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So pickup row is index 12. So then what I can do is say df.iloc. Again, all of the rows in index uh, 12 column. And again, good, exactly what, uh, what we would expect. So that kind of answers the motivating question, right? How could we get this series using lock or I lock? Again, by far the easiest way is not to use them at all, but just as an example of indexing. Um, in the kind of last part of the video, I want to show you some confusing examples. Um, and the point of this is just to kind of help you build intuition for dealing with indexing in pandas. So especially if you're seeing this material for the first time, we don't expect anyone to kind of be an expert on this yet. It's going to take um, at least a couple weeks to get used to the indexing and kind of get a feel for what will give you what. Um, so kind of a few confusing examples. Let's say I do df and if I call square brackets and pass a slice, so meaning I'm kind of doing something with this colon. So let's say here I do take the first three here. What this does is it's going to access the first three rows. So we have zero, one, two. These are the first three rows. Again, I specified df brackets for indexing and then I gave it a slice, then it's looking for rows. Now, really confusing, if I don't pass a slice, if I just say df3, this is looking for a column named three. Um, I know for a fact there's no column named three, so it's going to give a key error saying there's no column named three. So again, just wanted to give these two examples to show with a slice, it looks for rows. Without a slice, it looks for columns. All right, I think this is a good place to end the video. Thank you for watching.